kind of stepping back, I want to go back into, into the work that we're doing in terms of consulting and, and, and supporting other programs. Um, it was interesting, uh, I mentioned this to Steve because as I started out with this, I think that the, the lack of coaching is, is one of the two kind of biggest things holding back our sport from really excelling. And I think that it's, it's indicative in the growth, you know, and I, I come from a math you know, background in math and physics. And so I look at it and I say, you know, our, grow, our sport has had so much growth over the last few decades that, it, that if, the, if the slope of that growth is, is steep enough and there's a latency between when an athlete ends their career and becomes a coach and certainly between when they end their career and they become, you know, a competent, you know, and skilled coach, if the size of the sport has grown a significant factor within that latency period, you create the shortage of coaches, you know, because there wasn't enough athletes rowing mm -hmm. at the time needed to produce the coaches that are needed yeah. at the other time. And so our, our, our sport is just, and I don't know how it plays out at the college level because college has a lot more draw. Mm -hmm. and, and honest, even though college rowing has grown, it's still not nearly what the exponential growth at the youth level has been. And so there's just, and I think this was a big factor in what was the end of, of Essex, was just an inability to, to appropriately staff the program for mm -hmm. our needs and the interest. Um, and so a lot of those programs, they're just anybody who's willing to do it is coming in and taking that job. And when I was talking to Steve, you know, he had gone in the direction of being comfortable in, in recruiting leaders and teachers and not getting fixated on the rowing background or even if they had rowing. Yeah. And I know that you know, I'd spent some time helping out at Exeter in the fall because one of the coaches was on sabbatical and I was surprised at how little experience you know, the people below the, the head coach level had just in coaching and someone had never even rode before, um, someone had not coached before, um, but they were the teachers mm -hmm. and leaders because they were there amongst the faculty um, mm -hmm. at Exeter. And so I'm curious and, and kind of exploring that and that got me to thinking about what we're doing on the consulting side and if the, the sport and programs are comfortable saying, okay, well, we can't necessarily find enough experienced rowing coaches to serve our athletes, you know, maybe we just find leaders amongst the community who are good communicating and working with youth who are good teachers, you know, amongst the school. And it's actually really interesting. Teaching them rowing hmm. and then if that, if they went that, the role that, that people like you and I would have in terms of, of coming in and saying, all right, well, this is how you teach the sports, you know, yeah. or, or the, or sorry, how you, you know teach, how to teach, break, do the skill These breakdown. The skills, because you talked about, you know, going from soccer to rowing. So I was just going to say that that's really difference. interesting that yeah. you say that. That That is actually kind of interesting because I think about um, Unipro Star High School, one of the best athletic high schools in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Brady, uh, Lynn Swan, uh, Barry Bonds. I mean, it's crazy talk, the amount of athletes that have come out of Sarah High School. And their staff, most of their teachers, are all the coaches. Mm -hmm. So even if rowing was suffering with finding, I would pluck one right out of Sarah High School and say, all right, come on down and yeah. you know we'll teach you how to do X, Y, and Z because what are you, you already love to coach, you're already yep. enthusiastic, you definitely know how to teach, you're organized, mm -hmm. you know the athletes. So let's put that, uh, St. Ignatius is another one, Berkeley High School. Mm -hmm. um, Marin comes from an amazing spectrum of teachers and coaches, but they filter, they, like, I'm thinking of these small programs, but I think that's not a, that's not, I mean, look at Sandy Armstrong. She went to uh, San Francisco State. Mm -hmm. uh, B.B. Bryant swam at San Francisco State. Mm -hmm. You know, Hall of Fame actually inducted the same year as my father. So it, it is interesting that at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it does become that skill breakdown. Like I said, I was not a very good soccer coach at all, probably because I wasn't so passionate about it, but I actually really enjoyed tennis. And mm -hmm. once I kind of took a deep breath and the athletes, it was kind of like fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it was sport. I love to compete. They knew that it yeah. became, and I just kind of got their fitness in line, taught them a little bit more about focus and you know, goal setting and the skill kind of found its way. So I think that's actually a really interesting yeah, uh, concept. Just, I mean, the idea of maybe <laughs> keeping, keeping these consultants on a retainer of a sense of, of, you know, either they're coming in on a weekly basis to lay out the lesson plan and maybe it's 
you know, 90 minutes, two hours that they sit down with the whole staff, you know, on a Saturday and lay out the plan and, and yeah. hop on an erg or hop in, you know, a, a tank if one's available and say, this is how you teach this skill and then let them going on mm -hmm. or even, you know, well, it's kind of a moot point with the coronavirus going on and seasons getting canceled, but having things like, um, you know, coach it, those consultant type coaches available for when someone on your staff gets sick, you know, and it's like, I mean, we tell our athletes all the time, don't come to practice. So well, I tell yeah. them, don't come to practice if you're sick. You don't want everyone else to get sick. And but you know, I was there was times where we were short staffed at Essex, and I was just I was paranoid about me getting sick mm -hmm. because I knew if I got sick that there was yeah you there know, was thirty percent of the club that yeah. wasn't getting coaching, and the other yeah. sixty six percent could not stop what yeah. they were doing to cover mine. Um, and so you know, if programs kind of find these these. You know, those like ourselves, coaches that are also doing this consulting work, you know, in the region, there's a lot more out there that we, we haven't done a great job of kind of marketing it. But if they say, you know, we've, we lost our head coach to the flu, we are getting the flu, you know, once every year, two, two or three years, and, and having these people saying, hey, can you come in for this week, you know, and take over, and it, almost like a substitute. Well, first of all, I know. think it's a brilliant idea of what you have, and I'm gonna let you run with that, because that's gonna like launch yeah. you into a different, <laughs> correct, seriously. And, no, I really do, because it is about teaching yeah. from the beginning. One of the things that I've really envisioned for the schoolhouse in Philadelphia, since we are on the front line of a numerous amount of high schools, um, up and down the Schuylkill in mm -hmm. the Philadelphia region, there are a handful of young coaches and one of the dreams of the schoolhouse because of this you know p3 pe school of physical education mm -hmm. is to do in that retrospect a little bit what you've had and it doesn't have to be just the rowing coaches you're right it could be any kind of teacher to come in and sit down and let's talk about how to break the skill down on the erg yeah for the more advanced coaches meaning that they know what rowing is about how to communicate what's happening on the erg. Mm -hmm. Pretending that my the, the, the vision would be every week they would sign up for, you know, a coaching class for the semester. This class would be once a week. Uh, I would start off with a lesson and then once a week another coach would teach the class and we'd all chime in. So every week somebody got up, learned how to teach, learned how to skill break down, we'd have a talk. Class would be about 90 minutes. And it would just be this, it would just be this collective group of everybody learning how to use their words, gaining some confidence, uh, a little bit of humility, you know, and just kind of, I want to see the community in Philly build and, and, and create that environment of talking about, you know, the organization, communication, and professionalism, but going on the road and having schools like, I know Sarah High School could use that right now. I don't know what Berkeley is or St. Ignatius. But having that idea put out there, you know, be interesting.